This video is for the combining like terms note page. And so what we're going to do is we're going to simplify expressions by combining like terms. So you've got three different types here. You've got variable terms. These are terms with a letter with a variable. So like 5x, 7x, these are all variables. The coefficients are the number next to the variable. So the 7 here would be a coefficient. The negative 5 here would be a coefficient. And then you have constant terms. And these are terms without a variable. So like the negative 1 here at the end or the positive 8 here. So to simplify these, the best thing to do is to go through and identify everything that's the same. So I go through and mark all of my variable terms. And I keep this negative with the 5x because if you remember minus a 5x, if you add a line and change the sign, it's the same as adding a negative 5x. So you can go through and add or create or change all of your subtraction to addition problems to keep it straight if it helps you. And then what you do is you just add up all of those coefficients there. So for example, here we would add 7 plus a negative 5 plus a 4, and we would get a 6. So we would just do 6 and tack the x onto the end. And then we've got all of our constants. And so here we've got a positive 3, a positive 8, and a negative 1. And so when we add those up, we get a positive 10. So 6x plus 10 would be the simplified uh, version of this expression. So on the inside here, we've got more. And so here we've got 3x plus 6x. They're both variable terms, so we just add them together, add the coefficient. So 3 plus 6 would give me a 9x. The same thing here, but now I've got a 9 and a negative 10. And so I would have a negative 1a, but we don't always write this 1 here, so this would be the same as just a negative a. So now here again, we've got some mixed terms. And so we've got a positive 5 or a positive 7 and a negative 5, which would give us a 2, and then just tack the variable on the, to the end, and just one constant, so we just tack that on to the end. So here we've got two constants, so we're going to go ahead and write the variable term first, negative 6x, and then 9 plus 5 gives us 14. So here we've got about an even mix. So we've got variable terms, and then these are constants. So we've got a 7 and a negative 9, which would give us a negative 2p, and then a negative 1 and a positive 5, which would give us a 4. And so you just keep going down through your list and doing these. So these are both constants. So here I would have a 12h, and then a negative 6 and a negative 8 would give me a negative 14. So now when we get into exponents, the exponents have to match as well. So 5x squared and 7x squared are like terms. So again, we just add the constants. 5 plus 7 gives me a 12, and then we just tack the x squared on the end. Sometimes you have different variables. So 5x would go with 3x but 7y would go with 2y, and then we've got a negative x here. So for this one, for the x's, we have a 5. This would be a negative 1, Oop. and then this would be a positive 3. So that would give me 7x, and then 7 and 2 would give me 9y. So remember, if it just says negative x, there's an invisible 1 right there. So here we've got x's and y's again. So 26 and a negative 4 would give me a 22x. And then a negative 2 and a positive 10 would give me 8y. So here we've got exponents again, but they're all the same. So I can just go through and add all these up. So 8 plus a negative 7 plus a 16 gives me 17, so I've got 17x cubed. So you can see that the exponent does not change. You don't add the exponents up, just that coefficient. And so in this one, we've got 
two variables, but they match a squared b, a squared b. So those would still match up. So negative 4 plus 10 would be 6 a squared b, and then a single constant. So again, here we've got a mashup. So the 2xy and the negative 7xy are the only two that match up. So I would write x squared plus 4y squared because there's nothing to combine. And then we've got a positive 2 and a negative 7, which would give me a negative 5xy. So here again, we've kind of got a mix up. A squared and B squared, those are the only two um, like that. So we'd have 7AB and negative 10AB, so just A squared plus B squared, and then we would add the 7 and the negative 10, so minus 3AB. So when I'm getting a negative here, negative 3, again, you could add it. You could say A squared plus B squared plus a negative 3AB, but again, in simplest form, plus a negative is the same thing as subtraction. All right, so here we've got 4x squared and a negative 3x squared, and then a 2x and an 8x. So 4 plus negative 3 would give me a 1, so it would be 1x squared, but remember, we just write x squared. And then a positive 2 and a positive 8 would give me 10x. We can also do this with shapes. Again, if we find the perimeter, we are just adding. So it would be 2x plus 1 plus 3x plus x. Adding all the sides gives you the perimeter. And now we can again match our like terms. So a 2x, a 3x, and again, this would be a invisible 1 there. So 2 plus 3 plus 1 would give me a 6x, and then don't forget your single constant there. Now this one doesn't list all the sides, but what we can use is we can use the distributive property. So we know two sides are gonna measure this. So we could use this distributive property first, or you can just write it down twice. So this would be 6y minus 10. and this would be 2y plus 4, and then I can just add like terms again. So 6y and 2y gives me 8y, a negative 10 and a positive 4 would give me negative 6. So that's what we're doing in these. We are distributing and then we're combining. So we would distribute across here and we would get 16x minus 24 minus 6x, and then I would go back and combine my like terms. So 16x and a negative 6x would give me 10x minus 24. This one I have to distribute twice. So this would give me 18k minus 36. Now with this one, again, we can make it a negative. It would be a negative 2. And we would distribute that negative 2. So negative 2 times 7k would give me a negative 14k, and then negative 2 times negative 12 would give me a positive 24. So kind of match up, and you can tell that I'm using different symbols for the different terms. So 18k and a negative 4k, 14k would give me just 4k, and then a negative 36 plus 24 would give me a negative 12. So here, again, this is like an invisible one here. So it would be a negative one, and you would distribute that across. So I'd have 10. So negative one times y would be a negative y. Negative one times a negative six would be a positive six. And then a negative y here at the end. And so a negative y plus a negative y, again, your invisible math, these would be negative ones. So that would give me a negative 2y plus 16. And then we do it all over again. So again, this is like a negative 1 here. So we'd have 6. So 8 times 4w would be 32w. 8 times a negative 7 
would give me a negative 56. A negative 1 times a negative 2 would give me a negative 2w, and then a negative 1 and a positive 1 gives me a negative 1. So here we've got a positive 32 and a negative 2, so that would give me a 30, and then a 6 plus a negative 56 plus a negative 1 would give me negative 51. Now we've got fractions, so the same rules apply. You still distribute the same way, and again this is minus a fourth or a negative fourth, and you can use your calculator to do this. So I've got nine fourths times 10 over 3x would give me 15 halves x, and then oh, 9 fourths times a negative 4 would give me a negative 9. And then we've got a negative 1 fourth times a 2 would give me a negative 1 half x. And then a negative 1 fourth times a negative 8 gives me a positive 2. And so we're still combining the same way. X's go with X's, constants go with constants, and so if we do 15 halves plus a negative 1 half, we get 7, so we've got 7X, and then a negative 9 and a positive 2 gives me a negative 7. Let me focus again here. All right, and last one. So fractions again. So when your denominators start getting different, that's when these start getting tricky. All right, so we've got 7 eighths times 4 fifths would give me 7 tenths x. So 7 eighths times 16 would give me 14. 3 fifths times 1 half gives me 3 tenths x. And then 3 fifths times a negative 10 gives me a negative 6. And you can also kind of sort these with even different color highlighters. Highlight your variables in one color, your constants in another. So 7 tenths plus 3 tenths. And so when your denominator is the same, you just add the top two. So it would be 10 over 10 or 1. So again, we don't write 1x. We write just x. And then 14 plus a negative 6 would give me oh, a positive 8. I'm sorry. So that's it for this video.